subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. Are iPhone flagships still worth it here? We have just two days until the announcement of the updates to the iPhone 10 series of last year. We're going to see three new models. More than likely, it's like a 95% chance we'll see a larger version, a cheaper version, and we'll see, you know, just an upgrade that looks just like the current iPhone 10. Now, my past three flagship iPhones have been the iPhone 7 Plus, which ran me about 950 bucks when I first got it, 128 gig model. The iPhone 8 Plus, which ran me about 800 bucks. This one is a 64 gig model. And this guy right here, the 256 gigabyte iPhone 10 was like 1200 something with taxes and all that. So these phones are significant investments when you are buying a flagship phone, yet the market seems to keep upgrading every single year. I don't think there's been many tech products that can continuously be upgraded like a smartphone. This is pretty crazy. Every single year, the prices keep rising, yet record sales keep occurring. This never happens with laptops. People keep laptops for years. Okay, so for most people that are considering a flagship device, cost is gonna play a factor. I've been to Apple stores. I hear people all the time, how much is this phone? How much is that phone? Is it really worth it over this phone? I hear them asking people this all the time. I wanna answer their questions personally, but I don't know them like that, so I just take it to the video. The the iPhone SE represented something Apple doesn't usually do. Apple always wanted to bring high quality devices. They never really wanted to bring cheap devices, but the iPhone SE was kind of a recycled 5S and because they were able to use that body, they were able to bring the price down. But you know, phones like the iPhone 7 are still very popular because they're cheaper entries than these phones right here. Now, the fact of the matter is, is both of these phones definitely operate well enough to get your daily tasks done. And there's really no issues or big differences between using these two and using the more premium offerings. The applications run about the same. You're gonna get the same work done on either one of them. Yes, the iPhone SE screen is cramped. And yes, the iPhone 7 screen is small compared to some of these larger iPhones. But at the same time, these phones still operate and do essentially the same thing as these devices considering how consistent the iOS experience is across the platform. So the flagships, are they worth it? When you have mid-range offerings that can compete with the iPhone 10, such as the OnePlus 5T, the OnePlus 6, OnePlus is really killing in this category, but if you're not an Android person, the iPhone XC, the rumored cheaper iPhone, or even the iPhone XSE, who knows what it's gonna be called, maybe the iPhone XR, there's a lot of names floating around. This phone, I feel like, is gonna be the most sold iPhone this quarter, along with the iPhone XS Max, because you have two camps of people. People who either want the most premium gadget, or they want the cheapest gadget. There's not too many people, I think, that want the middle gadget. So, like, you know, the reason why the uh, OnePlus 6 has been so successful is because it's, yes, it's a cheaper price, and people want the cheapest flagship. It's still got the most premium type of specs you can get in a phone, basically, yet you have the cheapest price. So the people want the cheapest phone picked up the OnePlus 6, and over here on the Apple side, the people who want the most premium phone always pick up the iPhone 10, yet you see iPhone 7 and 7 Plus sales continue to be strong because people want a cheaper yet still modern device. So I think this is why you're going to see massive sales for the cheaper iPhone with the LCD screen, regardless if it acts as some features. I don't think most people are going to care about those features that Apple does omit. So as somebody who's experienced all of these flagships in the past couple of years, you know, I've already decided that before I started making this channel, making these YouTube videos, the only way I'm going to buy these phones is if I make them be intertwined with my work because it's just not worth it to, you know, buy these things things unless you're going to use them uh, for your work. That's how I feel. Anyway, but using the 4K video options is one of the areas where I found the more flagship iPhones to be more enjoyable, but not everybody is going to utilize the 4K 60 option, the 4K 30. But here is where having a flagship iPhone is definitely more beneficial than having a cheaper one is just more video options and uh, they just seem to record a little bit better video than the cheaper iPhones. So that's one area where I found 4K is, is great for like 8 plus iPhone 10, for example. Now, another area where I find a flagship 
iPhone worth it is if you're a very busy person and you're going hard on your work or whatever, you know, you're running your own business, or even if you, you're working for someone else and you're just, you're just constantly on the go, constantly busy, whatever you're doing, if you're really going hard at your work and you need that phone to keep up with you, the flagship phones are just nice to have because when you are going fast, you need your phone to go fast and it seems to always keep up when you're on the latest and greatest flagship device. Whereas some of the cheaper phones, they're fast, don't get me wrong, very fast, but sometimes they don't just, they just seem not to be quite as fast as these flagships. Another area where I find this one to be worth it, like these flagship iPhones, is basically if you're kind of like me, you want to satisfy your inner geek, you want to have the latest innovation, the latest and greatest in your pocket, it's satisfying feeling to have the latest. I'm not going to deny that. But at the same time, that's just, you know, that's going to be kind of niche. Like not a lot of people are going to care about having the latest and greatest because I know plenty of people who don't really care if they have the latest and greatest in their pocket. They just want a really good phone. And the last thing where I noticed that flagships are really worth it is usually they have better battery life than the cheaper phones. Most of the more premium iPhones give you bigger batteries. They're larger phones, so they just last longer than the cheaper phones. And that's a definite win if you buy a flagship phone. And one more thing as a bonus is that accessories, at least for that whole year that that flagship is current, it's very easy to find cases, accessories, pretty much at any stores you go to, they're going to offer these iPhone accessories because these phones are the top of the line and, you know, a lot of people are going to be buying them. So that's one area where I find flagships worth it as well. So these are my experience with them and those are basically the things that I find flagships worth it. And, you know, I should add too that if you buy a flagship, you're going to get more money, more value back out of your purchase when you do go to sell the phone. So that is another benefit. So in conclusion, are flagship iPhones worth it? Well, this is a different, you know, thing for everybody. For me, I'm a very busy content creator for YouTube. So the power of these flagships, the efficiency that they do offer and the better cameras allow me to improve my quality, keep my content flowing fast and things like that. So I feel like I get my return on the investment for these smartphones, but not everybody does. And if you're upgrading year over year and you're not really selling these off for basically the same price that you paid or close to it because iPhones do retain their value right before the new one comes out then you're kind of losing every year because they do plummet after the year ends and the new ones come out. Then you start seeing $200, $300 price decreases on older iPhones. So you got to really decide if you're really getting your money's worth out of these. That's the perspective of a YouTube content creator. Now, most YouTube content creators, journalists, people that write technology or make video for a living, these people are usually into tech. That's why they do it. They love what they do and they get excited for these devices. So, of course, they're that they got that inner geek. They want to promote it. They want to say it's great. And they have no I have no problem with that. They definitely are correct in saying that these phones are great but most of these people these people are getting a return on these smartphones so they're not in the perspective that you're in more than likely and that is i don't really need all of these features every single year that's where i think phones like the iphone 7 are still good i think the iphone 6s are still good the iphone se is still good and that's why you're seeing me make these videos should you still buy these devices even the iphone 6s plus all these phones are still strong offerings even though they might look a little bit dated compared to the new flagships. Now, don't let me dissuade you and make you think that I don't like flagships. I obviously love the flagships and I will have the new ones coming to the channel. But I also realize that not everybody is absolutely gonna feel the same about the way you know I feel that these phones are all worth it. So what are some of the smartest moves I think one can make? And I think that is to actually assess your needs, pros and cons, make a list. One side says pros, one side says cons see what the pros are. If the pros of a flagship outweigh the cons, then definitely go for it. But if you realize in that, you know, most of those pros on your list are just things that are basic tasks, most of the cheaper phones will do. So one of the best times to buy an iPhone is when the new one just drops, wait just a couple weeks after, head over to some third-party retailers and check out the prices like eBay, Swappa, Amazon, refurbished, you know, certified refurbished, that is. These phones are gonna drop two, $300 a piece, and uh, you're definitely gonna get a great, on just a one-year-old flagship, which is still very powerful. So there's no straightforward answer if a flagship iPhone is worth it. It really depends on the person. But I think more than ever, 
it's not really worth it for people who aren't gonna get a return on their investment, people aren't using these hardcore. Most one-year-old phones, most cheaper iPhones will do the trick and I'm really hoping we see an upgrade or at least a phone that is in that $500 price range like the iPhone SE was to replace this guy right here. And because of the fact that most people don't need all of the latest and greatest features all the time, and most iPhones do offer up the same basic iOS experience, this is why I think the XC or the cheaper model is going to be the hottest model on the market in just a couple months. But let me know your thoughts. Do you feel like a flagship iPhone is worth it every single year? Do you buy a flagship iPhone every single year? Did you buy one and you're like, why did I get this? This was just not worth it. I could have just got a cheaper iPhone. Let us know your thoughts down below in the comment section of this video. And if you found this video helpful, enjoyable, entertaining, informing, do me a favor, click that like button for me. 